Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe, and I'm so glad you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And today is going to be a deep understanding of the Word of God, and we're going to study evil spirits. So if you brought your Bibles today, please turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 19. And we'll start reading at verse 11. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of Siva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Essentially, they beat these seven men up. That evil spirit that was in the man. See, brothers and sisters, you and I do not have the powers that God gave Paul and the other apostles. He gave them overwhelming amount of the Holy Spirit, which is power, to cast out demons and perform all kinds of miracles so the kingdom, the furtherance of the kingdom of God could prosper in the early church. But you and I, if we come across a demon-possessed person, we are not to lay hands on that person because it's like electricity. That evil spirit could come out and come into you. So don't lay hands on people with demons, evil spirits. There are two kinds of possession of an evil spirit that comes into a man. There's constructive possession and there's physical possession, okay? It's kind of like a car. If you had a stolen car and it was in your driveway, that's constructive possession. Now, if you have the keys to the car, that's physical possession. You can get in the car, you can drive away, you can control it. Do you understand? We'll look into some more passages so you can get a better understanding. Turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 9, and we'll start reading at verse 17. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams at the mouth, gnashing at his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from his childhood. And Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to a deaf and dumb spirit, I command you come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And so he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. So brothers and sisters, if you know of somebody or you come across somebody who is devil possessed, he has an evil spirit, one that makes him convulse, you know, makes him being thrown into the fire or the water, 
In other words, this spirit has total control of him. Like the first passage that we read. You do not lay hands on them. You do not touch them. You pray for their deliverance with fasting and, and earnest supplication and prayer to the Lord. That the Lord delivers them. Because when that evil spirit comes out, you want them to be delivered with the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 11. We will start reading at verse 24. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Do you understand? So brothers and sisters, when we're born, we are born with an evil spirit. It tempts us all the time, but we fight that evil spirit. We put a barrier around it, okay? We pray to God. We rebuke it in Jesus' name when he tempts us. We fast, we pray, we sing worship songs of Jesus in our mind to get him to flee because you have to wrestle with that evil spirit, okay? Until you are delivered until you have made proper changes in your life to live for Jesus, to follow Jesus. To follow Jesus is to take him as our master, our teacher, our example, believe his doctrine, and obey him. And when we do that completely and fully, doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. God knows you'll make a mistake. And you ask forgiveness with remorse in your heart, and he forgives us. Amen? Amen. So praise God. Praise Yeshua. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. But you better yourself with your walk in grace with Jesus. And God will deliver you, cast out that evil spirit, and fill you with the Holy Spirit. From that day on, you have a guardian angel protecting you from all evil things, diseases, accidents, everything. So brothers and sisters... In Hebrews 10, 26, it reads, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. That sacrifice was Jesus dying on the cross for you. Without that sacrifice, no one can enter the kingdom of God. You remember the seed that falls on the side of the road and the thorns choke it with lust and riches. Remember the prodigal son, right? That can happen to you if you're not diligent in walking with Jesus, following Jesus, emulating Jesus every day until he comes for his church, that virgin church, and be part of that virgin church and go up to meet the Lord in the sky. Amen? Amen. So don't let that happen to you. One more passage. For if it does happen to you, in 2 Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 20, For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The later end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit. You've seen that, right, brothers and sisters? So don't be a dog. You be a servant of Jesus and follow him every day of your life. And make him your master, your teacher, your example. Believe his doctrine and obey him. And we'll all be with our Lord and Savior someday.
forever and ever. Amen.